Hey guys, welcome to Safi Next. In this video, I am going to prove this vector identity that is the sum of the modulus squared of the scalar product and vector product of two vectors equals the product of the modulus squared of the vectors. This vector identity is known as Lagrange identity. So to prove this identity, I first write each vector in its uh, components form and we have the components of the vector a i represent with a1 a2 a3 and i j k are the unit vectors along x y and z axis and similarly i write vector b and the components i represent with b uh, subscript 1 2 3 then i begin first to uh, find this part of the equation and that I can do by first finding the dot product and I write the uh, component form of the vectors on the right side of the equation. If now I remove the brackets I'll and expand the, the products we will get nine terms and out of the nine terms uh, six terms would go to zero because of the scalar product of the orthogonal vectors and I can reduce this to the form a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 and this form of the equation is obtained by using the orthonormality conditions on the identity uh, on the unit vectors that is uh, i dot i j dot j k dot k equal ones and the rest product goes to zero as per this one equation so uh, I can now take the modulus square of a dot b and that I can do by uh, writing. So that means I need to uh, take the product of the resultant this one in the form of this and then in the form of this. Right. Now again if I open up the brackets I'll get nine terms and out of the nine terms six terms add in pairs to reduce the result to uh, again three terms in overall we will get six terms in the equation in the form a1 square b1 square a2 square b2 square plus a3 square b3 square and 2a1 b1 a2 b2 2a1 b1 a3 b3 and singularly the last term and i gave this equation one now let me find the second part on the left of this equation that is I want to find a cross b and we can find a cross b either by writing the vector product in the form of determinant or by putting the values in the components form directly and I adopt the last approach that is I first put the value of vector a and then crossly multiply the value of vector b in the component form and again if i remove the brackets we will again get nine terms and then using the orthogonality conditions on the unit vectors i can reduce the equation into this form that is this is the i component of the resultant vector this is the j component of the resultant vector and this is the k component of the resultant vector uh, introducing this product into this form I have used these relations between the uh, unit vectors i, j and k and uh, you can uh, do the calculation step by step and then put in these relation to reduce the equation into this form. Okay now uh, I can remove this. Now let me take the modulus square of a cross p and modulus square can be written as a cross p scalar product with a cross b now putting these values at these two position i can rewrite the equation into uh, this one form so this is the value i'm writing for this and now i want to write the value for this for this one component into this form since we are calculating the scalar product of this vector in this vector and like in the case of this product this, this six terms would go to zero in only the three terms where uh, in only the three terms in which these unit vector multiplies with itself would survive to 
give three terms. So uh, this term uh, multiplied with this term will give i dot ai and I can write this as the square of this quantity into this form. Similarly, this term multiplied with this term would give me another term squared and this term multiplied with this term would give me the third term in the equation. Now, each single term is squared and contain two terms inside the bracket. So, using the a plus b square formula, we can put the first term into three terms like this one and then this one bracket would give me this relation and the last term would give me this relation and I call this equation 2. So now we have the value of a cross b modulo squared and a dot b modulo squared and summing up equation 1 and 2 would give me the right side of the equation. So I continue on the next page and if I substitute the value from equation 1 it would go like this. So this is the value of equation of equation 1 and this is the value of equation 2. Now we see that uh, this term cancels with this term and this term cancels with this term and similarly this term cancels with this term and the rest terms that are left I put into this form okay these are the three terms from this position then I write these two right and then I write these two and these two so this is the final uh, result we obtain now I can take a one common from this term, this term and this term and can write the result as a one times b one squared plus b two squared b three squared and I can take a two squared common from these three terms and can write the result into this one form and from the rest three terms I can take a two a three squared common and can write the result as this term. So we have three terms now and in each term we have b1 square plus b2 square plus b3 square. So I can take this term common to reduce the three terms into a single term in the form of a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square into this thing. Now if we look this this is in fact the modulo square of vector a and this is the modulus square of vector b. So what do we have? We have the sum of the modulus square of the scalar product and vector product of the two vectors equal to the product of the modulus square of the two vectors. That is, we can write the final result into this form. And this result is called Lagrange identity. If you haven't yet subscribed, Sophie Mixed, kindly support the channel by pressing the subscribe button and also the like button on the video. Thanks for watching.